welcome to the Department of Computer and Information Technology at the Polytechnic Institute at Purdue University, West Lafayette, Indiana. My name is Phil Rawls. I'm Associate Head for Undergraduate Studies and Facilities. And we're going to spend some time today talking about some of the specialized laboratories that we have that you might get the opportunity to work in if you choose to come and do your studies with us here at Purdue. So the first lab that I want to talk about is one of our networking labs, but this is really kind of the network management side of it. So this is where all the computers are that you're going to be connecting together in the equipment we're going to see here in a little bit. But if you look around this room, we have all sorts of computers that are tied off to the lab next door. And here is where we're going to learn about routing protocols, switching, and all of those things that make the infrastructure of a network go. How many of you spend any time without thinking about having your phone in your hand or a computer or something that's connected to a network? Probably the internet. You probably think of it as the internet. All of that stuff requires a lot of infrastructure on the background, not only in the, the communication pieces, the wires and the wireless networks that make it work, but also in all of those background services for your email and all those other activities that we take for granted on a daily basis. One of the things we cover here in CIT is how do you build and maintain all of that infrastructure as well as make all the applications that we're used to using, the Googles, the Ebays, all of that kind of thing. Okay, so when we take a look here, we're going to hit the next room where we cover exactly what kind of neat things are put together to build that infrastructure out for you. Okay, so let's cross the hallway into our networking lab where we can look at all the equipment that you're going to learn to use to build all of this infrastructure that we were speaking of. In this room, if you, if you look around, we have all sorts of routers and switches and firewalls that are used to build infrastructure out. We learn all about layer two networks, ethernet, wide area networks, OSPF, BGP, all the things that make the internet work, that make all of our infrastructure work. This is one of the unique aspects that we have here at Purdue is we do a very effective job at teaching these things. So welcome to the data center. This is the area where we have all of the infrastructure that drives our computing laboratories. So if we take a look, we have lots of virtual servers, storage area networks, these types of things, all things you will learn how to do in your education here at CIT at Purdue, albeit on a slightly smaller scale. But all of this equipment is what makes building out all of these labs that you're going to work in possible. This space is one where we teach how to build a cluster. So if you look at a lot of things that happen in modern IT, we have opportunities to do things like modeling the human genome, uh, search for a cure for COVID, modeling the common cold virus. All of these types of things are done with very large parallel computer systems. In this room, we'll actually take one of these little carts that has four computers on it, and you're going to build a small computing cluster. We're not going to solve the problems of the world on this thing, but we're going to learn how to put all the pieces together and build something that we can then extend up into larger systems that are going to be able to solve those types of big world problems. Now we're going to take a quick look at our cyber forensics laboratory. This is where students will learn how to take a look at a hard drive or a phone and look down into where people may have hidden data. You get a lot of this if you're a fan of CSI, watch that in the past. Uh, of course, it doesn't happen in real time the way it does on television. It takes a lot longer. But this is where we come through those things. There's almost no cases of crime solved that don't have some element of cyber forensics in it. Usually it's a mobile phone, tracking a mobile phone, text messaging, these types of things. We have partnerships with the FBI, with the Indiana Department of Investigation, and we have, through our cyber, High Tech Cyber Crime Unit, worked and helped solve cases in Texas and all over the U.S. on computer forensics pieces. So we have all of those things available to us. Some of the common questions we're going to get 
are things like, um, will I actually be able to touch the equipment? Absolutely. We're a hands-on experiential program. You'll get to touch the equipment. Uh, and that's really important because if you look at it, in a lot of cases, things don't always work the way they're supposed to with computers, right? We think they're going to work right, and then they hiccup and you have to be able to sort out what's wrong with it and troubleshoot it. It is impossible to teach someone those skills if all you have is a simulation. But if we're giving you real equipment to work with, you're going to run into problems. In, in fact, our graduates are often known uh, by the people who hire them as they're really excellent troubleshooters and problem solvers. And I've spoken at a lot of conferences, and they've said, well, how do you, how do you get that? How do you accomplish that? And it's like, well, if we give the students real equipment and we give them vague enough instructions, they're very good at creating their own problems to solve. They make bad assumptions, they plug things in wrong, and then all at once they have to figure out how to fix it and make it right. And that's one of those skills that you just have to get from, from experience. No one, no one ever learned how to write code. No one ever learned how to solve a problem by watching a YouTube video or reading a book. You only do it and learn it by experiencing it. Now we're going to take a look in our system administration lab. We talked before about all that infrastructure that occurs uh, to build the packets and get them going to where you want to go. There's a lot of background services that are required also. One thing I'd like to point out is, as you notice, all of our computing laboratories are configured such that our students can badge in and work whenever they want. So if you like to work in the evening or like to work late, no problem, we can do that. So one of the key things that we want to make sure everyone experiences here at Purdue when they earn their degree in CIT is that they have the opportunity to understand how systems are built and how they're managed and administered. So one of our required courses uses this facility. In this room you're going to learn how to install and manage computer systems. You're going to install Microsoft Windows, create domains, build storage systems, and we're going to do a big dose of virtualization. In the IT world these days, everything is virtualized. We use a lot of VMware, and we're going to build out those infrastructures so students know how they're built. We use them a lot in our upper division courses, and you're going to build a lot of things in a virtualized infrastructure. But here's where you actually get the opportunity to touch what we refer to as bare metal or a real computer, and then take something that's running on a regular computer and push it into the cloud and then we'll learn in later classes how to manage those things once they are in the cloud. In addition to Windows, which is where we start, we also learn a lot about how to install, manage, and deal with Unix systems. Speaking of Unix systems, this brings us to one of our other laboratories that's kind of interesting for us to talk about. In this laboratory, we cover a lot of things associated with writing code. So we write code not only for computers, not only for the web, but in this room we'll work on writing code for phones and for robots. So we'll have all sorts of interesting code building exercises that occur here. I'd like to also point out that in addition to the specialized CIT labs that we use for a lot of our infrastructure and security courses, we use standard university laboratories where we cover a lot of basic IT skills that you're going to find in most programs such as general coding, database, and systems analysis and design. We just don't have specialized laboratories for those. Welcome to one of our wireless laboratories. In this room, students get the opportunity to configure and learn about how to set up all sorts of wireless infrastructure, from a single access point, like you might have at home, to building out a large wireless configuration, such as what we would have in a, a building such as this on a college campus. We additionally do work in this space with 5G, so we have a 5G node on the roof so we can literally put our own 5G network together and test how that propagates. We have some large antennas uh, around the edge of the room that we do work with um, tracking mobile things, so if you have like a boat, how does it track and get to where it wants to do. One of the more interesting things in the wireless spectrum is actually taking a look at the wireless spectrum. So here on the spectrum analyzer, this is tuned into the 2.4 gigahertz range. So you can see these little bumps. Those represent the wireless signals that are 
being used for Wi-Fi. So our students start out with understanding that so you can understand propagation, how you understand penetration, interference, all those things that are required to build a solid Wi-Fi environment. While we're talking about wireless, we're working on a project right now with a couple of our colleagues across campus, one being with agriculture with burying sensors that are going to pick up soil temperature and pH and other characteristics uh, around the year and correlate that back to the growth and vitality of crop plants. So that's kind of challenging because the frequencies that we normally use for these sensors at low energy levels are the ones that get sucked up by water, which makes it a little hard to get that signal through the ground. So we're doing some research in different antenna design and putting together different parts to how to make that work a little bit better. And we want to take a look into this room where we do a lot of work in the area of the Internet of Things or IoT devices. IoT is a really exciting space right now. Uh, most people have all sorts of different devices in their homes from Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, Apple's Siri, HomePods, cameras, all sorts of devices. You can even get microwaves and toasters that plug into the internet. They represent a lot of interesting pieces. Need access points, need to have that wireless infrastructure because almost all of those devices work over wireless networks, but they also represent a huge security risk, especially as companies come and go in this space. They may leave a device that still works, that camera still works for you, but it hasn't had any security patches in the last three years and now all at once someone can log in and they can watch you through your camera. So if you have a lot of older IoT devices, especially from companies who aren't here any longer, might be a good time to upgrade those. Thank you for joining us today for our tour of the Department of Computer and Information Technology at Purdue University. We have several nationally renowned programs at the undergraduate level in information technology, systems analysis and design, cybersecurity, and computing infrastructure and networking. We also have graduate studies available in all of these areas and more. For more information, please contact the information on your screen, and we look forward to seeing you here in West Lafayette.